Welcome back to TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here from the camera store and today I want to talk to you about manual focusing and more specifically how some lenses focus well manually and others might have difficulty. I mean if you've ever watched our show you probably hear Jordan complaining about focus by wire lenses. So I want to talk to you about how that works, how lenses can focus and how that plays a part in making videography easier and photography as well. So today it's going to be both Jordan and I we're going to give you a little bit of an educational one here today and again it's not something that people talk about very often but it's important to understand how it's going to affect you at home. Hey guys it's Jordan the video guy and first of all I want to let you know what focus by wire actually is. So if you've used a traditional lens you're rotating that focus ring on it and you're physically focusing the lens elements but now with mirrorless bodies out here they're trying to keep size and weight down so they've brought out these focus by wire things where you're not actually rotating the focus mechanism what you're doing is spinning this ring it's sending an electronic signal saying hey we need this lens to focus closer or further away. Now the problem with that is you can feel very disconnected connected with it when you're shooting photos. But if you're shooting video and pulling focus, it can be a major issue. Now pulling focus is when we're manually focusing from one subject to another and it needs to be consistent when we're doing video work. However, if you watch right here, I'm going to rotate this lens 90 degrees and first I'm going to do it nice and slowly here and you can see our focus moves a little bit but now I'm going to move it quicker, moving the exact same distance and you can see it jumps from macro to infinity very quickly and if I need to do it again, director says I'd like a slower or faster focus pull that means it's impossible for me to do that consistently and this is a huge problem for us. So if you look at the focus ring on this focus by wire lens, there's not a lot there and that can be a huge problem for us. For starters, if I spin this, there's no hard stops. So if I want to know exactly what my minimum focus distance is, I can just keep on twisting it forever and look at the back of the camera, but I don't know for sure that I've hit it. On top of that, there's no distance markings on this and this is huge for us. If you're on a professional set, a lot of the time you'll have a focus puller there who looks at the distance scale on it and they'll pull focus from one to the other. But also, if I want to just quickly dial in a focus distance and follow a subject, I do this all the time for walk and talks. I'll focus it a meter and a half in front of me and I just try to keep a meter and a half between Chris and I, I have no way of knowing that I'm exactly there. And to make matters even worse, cameras like this Panasonic GH5 won't tell me how far I'm focused. They'll show some mountains and they'll show some flowers and I know I'm somewhere in between there, but I have no idea where the hell I actually am. All right, so we've heard Jordan do a really good explanation of some of the issues that we have with focus by wire. We can even take it a bit further. You know, there's a lot of techniques in videography where we want to have assistance getting those focus poles down pat. Now, when you have those hard stopped, distance scaled focusing rings, you can even do things like just as simple as white gaffer tape on the lens mount, mark with a sharpie where you want it to stop and where you want it to start. And again, somebody can assist you with that or you have a nice visual aid to do it yourself. And if you go even further, you can get a follow focus unit. And this is a device that goes on the side of your camera mounts with rails and attaches right to the lens and even a lot of cinema lenses will give you teeth gearing focus rings that will line up with these follow focus units perfectly. This gives you really nice leverage and again it usually has marking indicators so you know where to start and where to stop. Now on a focus by wire lens where the focus ring has no relationship with what distance you're starting and stopping at, these units and techniques are impossible to use. Now another common technique that we use in photos and video is called hyperfocal distancing. You may have heard of this and basically this is just using a fairly tight aperture and the depth of field that that creates to cover a given zone of focus. For example, let's say 5 feet to infinity or 10 feet to 30 feet and you know you've got that fixed zone where things should be sharp. Now again, one of the problems with zoom lenses first off is they can't really show you that distance scale. All of them are now a road return, not a push-pull style and so you cannot show the depth of field changing on these modern zoom lenses. Now luckily it's not all doom and gloom because some companies like Canon and Zeiss and hopefully more to follow have started putting electronic screens on their lens that can give you some of this information back. It'll show you what distance your lens is focused at as you manually focus the ring. That's great. The other thing they're going to do is they're going to give you your hyperfocal zone so you'll know from what distance to what distance should be sharp as you change your apertures. These are very useful tools and they'll even work on zoom lenses. Unfortunately though it still doesn't help you out with pulling focus in videography because you still have no reference point for how quick or how slow is going to move the distance how far. So that's still a challenge that only old school manual focus helicoids can solve for us. Okay, so you've said, guys, you've convinced me. I don't want to focus by wire lens. I'm going to grab something with a mechanical focus ring. Well, there's still some stuff to look at at that point. Here I've got a Yongnao 
a 50 millimeter f1.8 with a very short focus throw and you can see an example here where i'm trying to pull focus and track chris i it's not my best it's terrible honestly but you can look at something with the similar range that'll have a much longer focus throw like this 50 millimeter sigma here and you can see it's much easier for me to consistently track focus now one thing i do recommend if you're not planning to use these for photos as well look at some manual focus lenses here i've got this vedra and look at the focus throw on this it's incredibly long so i can be very precise uh, i can move very smoothly with a moving subject and i can make much more precise markings on it if i'm taping my focus marks it's a more elegant solution but you don't have to go to cinema lenses like these. You could also grab a classic Nikon AI lenses, Leica R lenses. A lot of old manual focus lenses are beautiful for shooting video. One other thing I wanted to quickly talk about that confuses a lot of people is you will see on the top of your cameras this little circle with a line going through it. And a lot of people are curious about what that is. That's for when we're using these manual focus lenses with distance scales on them, that's the flange. That's where your sensor or your film is going to be. And that's what you need to measure those distances from. A lot of the time people will grab a macro lens that says it's a one foot minimum focus distance. Doesn't seem that impressive, but the lens is almost a foot long. So we're measuring from the flange to that point and also if you're doing a more professional shoot you can actually take a measuring tape attach it to that point run it out and then set your distance markings based on that uh, that's what that mark is for and a lot of people were curious about it now you know so what can we do? How can we deal with these issues? Well, some lens manufacturers are doing something very thoughtful. With Jordan and I, we both love this feature in a big, bad way. And that is, for example, in Olympus 12 to 100, having this push-pull clutch. Now, I remember when companies like Tokina used to do this on their lenses, everybody just thought it was a gimmick, but now this is fantastic. This means that I've got focus by wire this way, and if I click it down, I get a distance scale, I get hard stops, and it's not variable speed anymore. And this is brilliant. You're not gonna get long throw but you are going to get some advanced manual focus capability. So another way that manufacturers are trying to help you out with solutions is unfortunately to be very brand based. So Sony users, I'm sorry, I hope they come with something soon. But there are companies who are using hardware or software to help you through these issues. Notably, one example would be Canon with their CMOS Hybrid Dual Pixel AF where you can just touch on the areas you want on the screen and it does nice smooth focus pulls. It's repeatable, it's useful, and it kind of gets you past that focus by wire issue. Other situations like Panasonic are going to be software based and they've got a really nice system where you can, even though it's focused by wire, determine where it's going to start and where it's going to stop. You can set those hard stops. On top of that, you can determine how quickly and smoothly it will focus. So now it makes focus by wire a very simple, repeatable system, albeit one that you have to go into a menu and sort out. As for the other companies, I hope they get you folks as soon as possible. All right, everybody, so in conclusion, I think the point that Jordan and I want to get across is that focus by wire really sucks. And I think why we're stuck with it so often nowadays is because it lets camera lenses be more affordable, smaller, lighter, more compact, and that's kind of what we want in the stills market. And let's be honest, manual focus is very useful, but it's becoming a lost dead art in the stills world. And if it's not completely extinct, focus by wire is sure gonna push it that way, unfortunately. So what is the holy grail? There isn't one, unfortunately, because nobody makes a lens that's gonna take care of all your needs in an elegant fashion. Olympus lenses like this 12 to 100, they do come pretty close. You've got the compact nature of focus by wire, you've got the clutch with hard stops so you can manually focus, and that is nice, but for videographers, it's still a fairly short throw. You're gonna want something longer, and you can't really attach follow focus units very easily or effectively to these kits, so that's not perfect. I wish that they would come up with a lens like this that had a longer throw, something aimed at both stills and video, because that would keep you from having to lob these huge things around. They've got the teeth focusing rings, so you can add follow focus units onto them, stepless apertures, image quality, all the rest. But, you know, manual focus types for still photographers, you might want to drag this out. I doubt it. But videographers, this is what you're left with. There's just no holy grail. Anyways, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that educational video. And again, don't forget, if you want to see more of these things, share this video. Get it out there. We'd be happy to make for you. Don't forget, check out our Instagram feeds, check out Twitter, subscribe to our channel. And from both of us, we'll be back very soon. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.